and this video is sponsored by Manscaped. They've just launched the Lawnmower 3.0 in the Republic of Ireland. You could be one of the first people to get this product. It is perfect for when you're trying to trim those hairs down below and also it comes with an LED light so it allows you to find those rougher edges a lot smoother and obviously it works in the shower so it is waterproof so you can use it down there but you don't always have to just get that product there's lots of other products on their website at manscaped.com use the code IFFTV for 20% off and free shipping check it out in the description yeah just Simon Campbell says lads what are your thoughts on Duffy starting in Serbia on current form I have Clark in instead Duffy would normally automatic uh, would normally be an automatic starter and rightly so, but currently his confidence is rock bottom. It is a difficult one, and I know we spoke about this last night, not really at length, but it is a it is an interesting one. Like Shane just doesn't seem to be having a good time of it in Scotland whatsoever at Celtic, and it seems as though no matter how well he plays, it always seems to be one little error that leads to a goal or has you know one little error and it's magnified 10 times more i think that goes down to the fans not being allowed in ground and stuff like that and they're taking all their frustrating out frustration out online at him i think that's why he's came off social media i haven't i can't confirm or deny those claims but i know he's definitely came off instagram probably for a while and rightly so i can totally understand why he has if that is the case but uh clark's done really well i think egan is still doing really well even despite the results, I mean, on today they were battered by Spurs, but most games they've been in, they've only been losing by the odd goal. Still think he should be looked at by a Premier League club next season, if and when Sheffield United do go down. And um, then you have Dara O'Shea, and you have who else? Kevin Long. You have a, a whole selection of, of centre backs. And I think we actually forgot about Kieran Clark last night when we were talking about centre backs. I knew we were forget somebody. But yeah, Clark's been in fantastic form and has all the experience there probably the next best to Duffy in terms of having that experience for those big European games or big qualifying games and uh, I think he would probably be a definite option for Stephen Kenny to come in there maybe to partner John Egan in central defence what do you think Gary? Yeah I mean Kieran Clark is playing really really well for Newcastle I believe he's uh, in talks, if he hasn't signed a new contract already, he will be signing a new contract soon. Um, I know Stephen had him on the bench in November, but I think he was he was only just coming back to full fitness there after the, the injury. So, yeah, on current form, uh, he has to be in with a great shout of starting. Um, now, Shane Duffy, Shane has never left us down, and he's played really well for his country. I know he's having an awful time of it in Scotland and getting terrible abuse from the fans. Um, I don't know, maybe he's turned a corner. In the, in the last, I, I actually watched the Celtic Hibs game on Monday night and I actually thought he played really well. But then, unfortunately, he was partly at fault. And I would say partly at fault, but he wasn't, he wasn't great for the equalising goal, which, of course, gets all the fans on his back again. And I believe, I didn't see anything of the, the game yesterday, but I believe he played pretty well. And, I mean, well, Celtic kept a clean sheet. So that's all you can ask of your centre half. If you're drawn nil nil, you keep a clean sheet. And he's played reasonably well. So maybe he'll uh, he'll find his form again and get a, get a decent run of games. I mean, it was, it, it was pretty poor reflection on Shane's form when uh, Neil Lennon... Well, one, he, he left him out of one of the games just over Christmas. And then when the centre half went off injured, he actually brought on a midfielder and played the, the midfielder in um, in the centre back row. Yeah, a bit on, that's right, uh, with Shane on the bench. And then for the old firm game, he actually started bit on. And it's only when he got sent off that Shane came off the bench and got his place back. But, well, Hopefully he's got his place back. Um, now I know Celtic had COVID issues as well, so they have players coming back and now. Um, so I don't know if Shane's actually going to keep his place. Hopefully he's done enough in the last two games to keep his place. And uh, but yeah, as of now, it's probably a good shout to say Kieran Clark or, or possibly Darrow Shea. I mean Darrow Shea is playing really, really well in the Premier League as well and did really well for Ireland in the autumn. 
So I, I think we're talking about John Egan. I think John Egan is an automatic starter, and he will, if fit, he will certainly start in Belgrade. But if we're going with two centre backs, it could be interesting to see who will partner him. Uh, could be Shane Duffy, it could be Kieran Clark, and it could well be Darrow Shea. Yeah, but I just think that the way Shane's last year has gone hasn't been good for him personally, and I think his football as well. And obviously, we we spoke about him last night as well, and how he hasn't left Ireland down, or let Ireland down, sorry. Uh, he hasn't let us down. I, I feel as though he maybe had a bad game in one of the summer games. Was it, uh, I think it was one of the the Bulgaria game with the first goal. And then he obviously got the equaliser. I think that was probably, and he made up for it by scoring the equaliser. I think that was the only real thing you could have really blamed him for out of the those games that were played. Some will say the Finland goal as well, maybe, but I think that John Egan was just as much at fault for that one. But I think other than that, then after those summer games, I thought for us, he was fine. I thought against um, Hibs the other night, I think it was, I thought he was doing really well. He was organising all the young lads around him and organising all the defenders. you got to remember, he carried Matt Doherty through that game against Wales at centre-back as well. You know, He you know basically coached him through the game beside him. Now, I know Matt Doherty is a professional and stuff like that, but Duffy was telling him where to go, where to be, and everything like that. And Matt Doherty didn't look out of place at centre-back in that game. I know Cyrus Christie came on for, for Matt, and we were, you know, I thought we were the better team against Wales that time. So I do think well, you're right, right in what you say that you know I think Duffy could still come back in and do a job. But I just think maybe leave him out of the limelight for for the next while until he maybe picks up form. But he might pick up form between now and March anyway. So it's it is a bit hypothetical right now. But yeah, I suppose if I was going for it right now, I'd probably have Clark and Egan starting just purely down to the Clark has the experience in in games like Serbia. That would be the only reason. I think Dara Oje would be unlucky not to start as well. But it's good to have the options. And again, I'm not Stephen Kenny, so I'm not guaranteed that any of these players are going to start. But it's just my personal preference, you know. And I think having someone like Dar Roger or Shane Duffy, and then Shane Duffy's been his captain, let's not forget when Seamus Coleman's not, uh, not been there. Shane Duffy's been the captain as well. So let's not forget that too. So he does have responsibility there and he might feel more confident. I know he's he thinks he plays better when he plays for Ireland than he does for any other team like Brighton or Celtic or whatever. From speaking to him, he's told me that personally that uh, he feels like he plays better for Ireland. But that was under Mick, so I haven't really seen him in person other than press conferences to to see under Stephen or whatever. But as I said, the the only two games that he performed moderately bad in, and um, it's just one mistake that led to a goal that seems to keep on happening to him, unfortunately, um, in the last while. But in the summer, that was the only thing. It was the Bulgaria game, and then he got the equaliser. With the last, you know, shot of the game, basically. Yeah, and I mean, we have been saying for a while that possibly one of our biggest goal threats at the other end of the pitch is Shane Duffy from a corner mm. or a, or a free kick. And so a lot will tell on his form with Celtic over the next couple of months. I saw there has been talk he may end up with Chris Hewton in Nottingham Forest. I'm not even sure if it's allowed to go on loan to a third club in the I in think the it's dead in the water. I think uh, okay. you know Forest fans were saying online that they don't need him right now. They have centre-backs there and Celtic came out saying that they're not letting him go, basically. So I think okay. it's been but, put dead in the water now, you know. Well, hopefully he'll be playing uh, regularly, keeps his place, plays week in, week out, and gets his confidence and his form back. And another thing we have talked about before is, I suppose, the different styles, and maybe Scotland doesn't really suit Shane Duffy in that. Uh, if you take the Scottish League, Rangers and Celtic are typically well ahead of the other teams, and they're normally camped in the opposition's half and uh, Shane will be playing with a very high line, etc. Whereas previously at clubs like Blackburn, Brighton, he would have been playing in a club that's in a relegation battle and would be the ones that would be pushed back and he'd be doing a lot of defending in his own penalty box, etc. So it's getting blocks in, getting his head his head on uh, corners, crosses, etc. So it wouldn't be a case of trying to catch forwards from the halfway line, etc. Um and, and he wouldn't have been... Now, I know Stephen plays this way as well, but he wouldn't be as... in. Take John Stones, who scored tonight. He wouldn't be your typical John Stones type of central defender who's very comfortable on the ball, bringing the ball out from the back. And 
but I, the, the downside to that is that's probably the way Stephen wants to play as well. And if you're looking at a defender who does that, then Darrow Shea is more of uh, in that mould than Shane Duffy. Or even Kieran Clark, who I think is a, a really talented player and he's been a bit unfortunate with injuries and would have had quite a bit, quite a few more caps for us uh, if he hadn't. But he is fully fit now and he's playing really well for Newcastle. So, yeah, away from home in Belgrade in a tough, tough game, tough place to go. Maybe the experienced head is what Stephen will go for. Yeah. Well, let's see. Anyway, hopefully um, he can just turn things around because you know you like you don't like to see any of our players going through a barren spell or, or not enjoying their football.